Today, inshallah, I want to talk about something uh, purely from a historical point of view, inshallah. And hopefully next time when you go to uh, Medina, the city of Rasulullah sallallahu the masjid of the Rasulullah sallallahu this will give you some perspective next time, inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we all know that he died in the 11th year after Hijrah. It was the 12th of Rabiul Awwal. It was right after Sat al-Dhuhr, uh, according to many accounts. And it was at that same time that Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he was away. And before this, Abu Bakr radiallahu an was not leaving the masjid. He was remaining at the masjid during the entire time. It's mentioned that perhaps a few days before this, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked for the curtain be removed. And he smiled. And when he smiled, he smiled looking at his, his Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Abu Bakr radiallahu an got this impression that perhaps things are getting better with the health of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, he decided that finally let me go and I can leave the masjid and take care of some things. So it happened that during that same time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he passed away. At that same time, people began to say that it was a rumor. The Prophet has not actually passed away. Umar radiallahu an went inside the masjid and he said that Musa alayhi salam went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 40 days. This is perhaps just a visit of the Prophet sallam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anyone who says that the Prophet sallam has passed away, I will take their life. And Umar ibn, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, he's, you know, he's going through this emotional state. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he comes, he hears What's been going on? And he doesn't go first to the masjid. He comes directly to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, his daughter. And he found that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was lying. And there was a sheet of cloth on him. And he picked up and he opened up the cloth. And he saw the, the beautiful face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he kissed the head of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And then he began to cry. And at that time, he went inside the masjid. And he told Umar ibn Khattab, Umar sit down. And then he got up. And before this, he was always hesit hesitating in leading the salat. But this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that confidence that he stood up on the mimbar and very boldly, he, uh, he addressed the entire community by saying that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has indeed passed away. And then he recited these ayat, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدَ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولٌ That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is no different than any other messenger of the past. That prophets came and prophets left this world. And at that time, it is mentioned that Umar al-Khattah, he was saying like, this is like th actually the very first time I'm hearing something like this. Because before this ayah, as many ulama, they say that this was revealed right after Uhud or during Uhud. Because at that time also, Rasulullah he was away for some time. And the Sahaba, they actually thought. And the Quraysh were saying that the Prophet has died. This rumor was spreading. But this time, this was not a rumor. This was actual fact that the Prophet has passed away. And he passed away on Monday. And it's mentioned that they began to discuss exactly how do we do the, how do we do the janazah upon Rasulullah wasallam. And the reason I'm talking about this today is because, you know, last week we had several janazahs and there was a brother who came to me afterwards and said, you know, how was the janazah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And that's why today I decided to talk about this. Anyway, they, it was agreed upon that Ibn, Abba, uh, Ibn Abbas and his two sons, Ali radiallahu an, and there was perhaps a freed slave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his name was Safina. They both, they all decided to, to give a bath to the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is mentioned also in this books of Sirah that they went to sleep and they heard a voice that was actually from Jibreel alayhi salam that you are not to take off the clothes of Rasulullah sallam but you are to give a ghusl to the Prophet sallam with his clothes on. So hence they did exactly that. And now the question came that who's going to pray Salatul Janazah on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is mentioned that no one came forward. And for the next two days... For Monday, if not Monday, but Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Throughout this entire time, there was no actual Salatul Janazah on Rasulullah Sallam as a community. They came individually throughout Medina. Every person came and they prayed individually on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then they left. So there was no collective Jama'ah Janazah on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now after this happened, the question also then begged that where is he to be buried? Some say gentle baqir, but as according to a hadith of the Prophet, ﷺ, wherever a person dies, wherever the Nabi dies, he used to be buried over there. So, what happened was that he was buried right in the house and right in the room of Aisha. Anha. 
And so it is mentioned that if you just, and I want you to imagine, imagine this is a rectangular room, okay? This is a rectangular room. Aisha radiallahu anha, her bed is all the way in the back, okay? Her bed is all the way in the back. And the grave of Rasulullah Sallam is all the way at the front. Now, when Abu Bakr radiallahu anha dies, he is buried right next to the Prophet Sallam, but slightly back. So first comes Rasulullah Sallam, then comes Abu Bakr, then when Umar ibn Khattab died, then Umar's grave comes there. You understand? So one, two, three. And who's sleeping in the back? Aisha radiallahu anha. Now this was how the setup was. And that setup is there till today, by the way. Now, in the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, this entire house of Aisha radiallahu anha, this quarter of Aisha radiallahu anha collapsed. The roof collapsed over this, over this room. Now at that time, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he decided because on one end of the, of the house of Rasulullah Sallam, you had the house of Fatima radiallahu anha. And on the other end of the house, you had the house of Hafsa radiallahu anha. These two houses were removed. This room was, this room was again cleaned up and so forth. That damaged roof that fell upon the house of the Prophet Sallam or the grave of the Prophet Sallam, that all was cleaned out. And he put this huge wall around it. Now, because people may actually think that these are four walls around the, 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 um, the grave of the Prophet Sallam, perhaps someone may come and they start making tawaf around this. So what he did was that he created a room of five walls. And so there are five walls around that, that room. And it is mentioned that there is no door to that room, by the way. There is absolutely no door to that room. And, and if you ever see, by the way, if you ever see any picture like, you know, sometimes you see these kind of uh, photos floating around on WhatsApp that this is the, this is the, the, the photo of the grave of Rasulullah Sallam. It's a complete fabrication. It's a complete lie. Because from that point onward, no one is allowed, even the Saudi government, they don't go inside that, house, in that room. No one is allowed to go inside that room where Rasulullah Sallam is buried. Not even for cleaning purposes. Not at all. So during, so during that time, he created it. Later on, the Mamluks came and they actually put some certain reinforcements around that wall. And it is also mentioned that later on there was a fire that took place and the roof and there was a, do there was a dome that was created on top of that. That dome collapsed. Okay, that dome collapsed. Again, they went inside. The Mamluks at that time, they went inside. They cleaned it up every single thing. They put that same wall around the way it was created by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. And that wall still does exist till today. And then they put another dome on top. And from that time till today, it's been that way. Now, when you go to Babu Salam, when you go to Babu Salam, and you enter through Babu Salam, now imagine I'm facing the Qibla. You enter through Babu Salam from this way, right? Yes or no? As you enter and you come this way, and you are coming, and you're walking this way, and you're, and you're setting your salams to the Prophet Sallam, the Prophet Sallam is the very first Qabr that is there. Okay? It's the very first Qabr. And usually, he's between... If you look at the, the map and the, the layout, he's between, you know, there's usually, you know, there's, there's a first, you know, circle or hole that you can see through, which nowadays the Saudi government have pushed everyone away because there's always these crowds and so forth. That is not, you look inside, you won't see the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. What you will see is just that room, you understand? And even if you look through hole number one, uh, hole number one, two, or three, you only see that room. You don't get to see the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You see that room. You see everything around that room. They will come and they will clean around that room, but no one is allowed to go inside that room. And when you are passing by and you are sending your salam to Prophet sallam, keep in mind is that you are buried, and when you are buried, you are buried on what side? On your right side. So if this is if this is his head, so this, so basically, he is facing this way, and so you're making salam, and he's a very first grave, then comes Abu Bakr, then comes Umar. And so this is next time when you go, you understand now that how was the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, and this is the small history that we find that it is mentioned in our books of Sirah. And not only that, but if you go even to Medina today, they have a museum where all this is laid out. You have to go and get a good understanding of what it looks like. Last time when I went for my Umrah group uh, from Epic, we actually took our entire group there to Epic. And there I was able to explain because Sira is one of my passions, honestly. I love teaching Sira. I love studying the Sira of the Prophet So when I went, I took my entire group 
and they actually thought like I was a, a child in a candy store. Okay, literally. The way I was going, so I was so happy just to go there and be there. You know, and there, there was a tour guide over there. He explained every single thing. But when you go there, you have, you, you're able to understand Sira a little more next time. So that's why I just wanted to give today this brief historical background of the, the janazah of Rasulullah and how the room of the Prophet Sallam where he's buried is constructed and so forth. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us and grant us many more understandings from the Sira and from the history of our beautiful religion of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa الله بركاته إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما Amen. Uh-huh.